Hello World Cup fans, welcome back to yet another match preview, this time looking ahead to the second Group D match, that is Croatia up against Nigeria, we'll talk about that match and much more on today's show. That's right folks, back once again with another match preview, this time looking ahead to the second Group D match between Croatia and Nigeria. We'll talk about more about that match in just one second. But if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things World Cup related. And hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll be joined live right here on this uh, in this video from fans from Croatia and also Nigeria. Fingers crossed. Um, Hopefully they'll make it. Uh, but anyway, we'll talk. We'll talk about the fan opinion a little bit later. Let's just take a little bit of a closer look at the match itself. It takes place in the Kalingrad Stadium out in Kalingrad on the 16th of June 2018. Uh, Croatia currently managed by Slakdo Dalic, uh, and they got themselves here by winning a uh, second round playoff uh, after f after being runners up in Group I with Iceland. Um, the match will uh, well, they secure their qualification on the 12th of November 2017, and this will be their fifth tournament. Now, I think this is actually where it gets political and all that kind of good stuff. I think that's fifth tournament as 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 uh, as Yugoslavia, as um, whatever uh, whatever formats Croatia have, have, have been a part of. So, um, yeah. Anyway, the last appearance was in 2014 and their best ever performance was way back in 1998 in France when they finished third, um, uh, finishing after the third or fourth playoff match. Um, and you can get current odds on 33 to 1 for Croatia to win the tournament. Let's take a look at the schedule for Croatia. Obviously, they open up their tournament with the matchup against Nigeria. We are talking about that match right here, right now. And then they take on uh, Argentina on the 21st of June and the Nishkivi Novograd Stadium out in Nishkivi Novograd. Then they all wrap it up their group phase up against Iceland in the Rostov Arena in Rostov on Don. Let's take a look now at the opposition Nigeria, currently managed by Gernot Uh They secured their qualification by. Uh, Winning Group B, the, the Central African Federation qualifying campaign. They secured that on the 7th of October 2017. This will be their sixth appearance in the World Cup, their last being um, 2014 out in Brazil. Uh, their best ever performance was the second round knockout phase, and they did that. They achieved that in 94, 98, and 2014. And you can get current odds on Brazil, uh, Brazil uh, Nigeria winning the World Cup at 200 to 1. Now, these two sides have never met. In international competition, so uh, this will be their first first match, and it could be a little tasty one. Um, as for the rest of the group, we've mentioned them earlier: Croatia uh, and Nigeria will be joined by Argentina and Iceland in a tasty-looking Group D. Obviously, when you look at that, or when the draw was made, you think that Argentina should go through, but those three other sides are—they're not pushovers. They're no—they're no, no run-of-the-mill sides. So each one of them have got a realistic chance to get through. And for this game in particular, Croatia up against Nigeria. Um, I think whenever these sides take on Argentina, they're expecting they're expecting not to get much. If if they get a point, it's a bonus. If they get a win, it's a major major bonus. So this game is massive for the for the overall positioning of this group. So Croatia and Nigeria will both don't want to lose this game. Um, but if a draw, <clears throat> if this was to pan out a draw, then you're going to look at Iceland and they're going to be thinking. Hang on a minute, we got a chance here. So, uh, so, but to be honest with you, I'll give you, I'll give you my verdict shortly after I hear what I, what the fans have been saying. So you've heard a little bit what I think about this match, but what you really want to hear is a fan's point of view. And guess what? Yep, it's my football journalist time because I've been stood up yet again. Oh my goodness, Mr. Croatia is a big fat no show. But yes, my main man, the football brain. Mac is back right here to talk Croatia. Say hello once again, just in case this is the first time you've seen him. Introduce yourself to the world. Mike Tosamak. Um, been a football enthusiast since I was five years old. Um, follow it like my religion. Yep, yep, yes. And yep, I, I said it the last time, I'll say it again. Manchester United fan, leave your comments in the description below. So we're talking Croatia, who are in Group D with Argentina, Iceland, and their opponents in the first game, Nigeria. Now, I, I like the look of this group. I think it's it could be one of the most entertaining ones. I like the look of Nigeria, and but again, it 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 could. I think it's a four horse race. I think they've all got a chance to get out of this group. But if Croatia are to give themselves a real good chance, which game must they win uh, in order to do so? Give them a good chance. Uh, I'm going to say the, the first game against Nigeria. I think they need to start off on the right foot. Um, 
you know, and I think that's going to set the precedence for, for the rest of the matches that they have. Okay, well, they do take on Nigeria in that first game, and like you said, they should, well, they, they will need to win it if they are to give themselves a good chance. A draw would kind of give Iceland a bit of a boost, but what, exactly. what, would, what would worry you if you were Croatian about the Nigerians? Um, I'm going to go with pace. I mean, they got a lot of fast guys out there. Um, they do have, you know, uh, a few guys who are playing, you know, in the, some of the top leagues right now. Um, so yeah, I, I, that would be the, the, the biggest thing that I would see. I mean, if you look at the Croatians, I mean, they're tall, you know, they're somewhat fast, but when you're going up against little guys who are quicker and can get around you, I mean, they're going to create a lot of opportunities, but when I'm looking at it, you know, like for like player, you know, I, I'm going to go with Croatia. I think they got the the, the check above. Yep, they do. They, they they are very creative in the midfield. But we'll get to your predictions in a second. Now we're gonna we're gonna give you that magical one again. Go all Harry Potter on you. And if you could wait, excluding Messi, I'm telling you that right now. But if you wave that magical wand, you probably wouldn't pick Messi because I know you. Uh, you would have you know diverted it because of your, your United links and Ronaldo passion. But anyway, if you give that magical wand. And you could pick a player, exclude Ronaldo, uh, uh, Messi, from Group D. And who would it be? I'm going to go with Paulo Di Diablo. Mm -hmm. um, I just think, you know, he would just be an added strength to that midfield. Um, and I think, you know, he also can play up front, you know, on the attacking side, just in case Mandukic or Perisic is not getting it done. I think, you know, he could definitely fill in and, you know, be a difference maker for them. Okay, so we've we've waved the magical wand and you brought in the, the fella from Argentina. Now let's hop into the hot tub time machine and go ourselves back into time. If you could grab somebody, recently decent history. I think they've been involved in the World Cup since 94. But if you could grab somebody from their history and put them in the current 23, who would it be? Um, I'm going to go with Sarnan, the fullback. Um, played in the Ukraine League. You know, I think that's the only weakness I see right now with the Croatian team. Um... You know, they're great in the midfield. they got great attackers. Uh, they're back four. I mean, yeah, it's it's other than Vasilko. I mean, I, I mean, you got Lovren back there, which, you know, he's been playing third string for Liverpool. I'm not going to go there. But, um, yeah, and I mean, the other center back, um, I think he's playing in the Russian League the last time I checked. Uh, Korkulo, I believe his name is, and... Um, I think he was injured for a lot of the season. So, yeah, I really think that's going to be the, you know, the, the biggest thing for them. Plus, their goalkeeper did not have a great season either playing in Monaco. So, yeah, I think the, the defensive side is, is where they their Achilles heel is right now. But they can somehow get together and, and solidify that back four. I think they, they have a chance to go on a, on a decent run. Yep. Yep, but unfortunately they cannot bring him into the 23. They're stuck with the whatever they have. Okay, as my football brain, what is the prediction between Croatia and Nigeria? Final score? 4-0. 4-0? For who? Croatia. For Croatia. Wow, that would be, that would be Perisic. something. Perisic with the hat trick. Oh my goodness. That's bold. That is very, very bold. Also, Argentina, I think they start the group up against Iceland. What's the final score in that game? Uh, I'm going to go with Argentina 2-1. 2-1, close game, close game. I think I think the Icelanders are just, they'll they'll take, you know, they, I think they just want a good performance. But, uh, you know, I think everyone's um, expecting to lose against Argentina, but. I think they, you know, they shocks the people, you know, everybody in the 2016 Euros. I think they could do it again. They, they, uh, they could. If, you know, these larger teams take them lightly, which is what happened in Euro 16. Yep, I don't know if Lightning's going to be striking twice because I think maybe everyone's expecting them to do what they did. But hey, you never know. That's 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 uh, one of the one of that's the football. one of the fairy tales that could pan out this weekend. Okay, if you are don, if you could don on your Croatian hat again and give a motivational bit of words of wisdom for them as they start their World Cup preparations. Um, be brave. Um, don't be afraid. And attack, 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 because that's your strength. 
Yep, they are very creative up front and they can create a bit of magic out of anything. And uh, thanks again, Mike Toxamac joining me as my football journalist. Lastminute.com substitute is coming in on a fantastic job. So I do appreciate that. We'll let you get out of here. So we've heard the Croatian's point of view. Now, what about Team Nigeria? I am joined here once again by one of my representatives this time for Nigeria. Tell them a little bit about yourself and, uh, you know, maybe something quirky. I don't know. Um, my name is Uzoma. Um, I'm, I'm very happy. I'm very excited to be doing this project. Um, obviously, because I live, sleep and breathe football. And I've been obsessed with football for as long as I can remember. Uh, I remember watching um, Korea Japan 2002, and that being like my first like World Cup experience. That I was really into, and I was just, I was just seven, and you know, since then it's just been football, football, football. So, you know, I, I'm excited to do it. as as am I, as am I. Now, obviously, Nigeria in probably one of the most entertaining groups. I think you got Iceland, yeah. Argentina, Croatia, and yourselves. Yeah. Now, if yeah. Nigeria have to win one game, what game is it, and why? It has to be the Iceland game uh, because no disrespect to Iceland. That's, they have an amazing team. They have amazing players. Um, but considering the other two teams in the group, that you know, that's the weakest team. Um, and that's the team that we realistically can get as the, the full three points from. Um, you know, they don't have that much experience in the World Cup. Um, it's, you know, it's just, it's just a game that we should win. That's for right. obvious reasons, yeah. Yep, yep. And now, obviously, you take on uh, Croatia in the opening game. Now, yeah. what concerns you the most about Croatia? They have a world-class midfield. Um, you know, the trio of Modric, Rakitic and Brozovic or um, Kovacic at Real Madrid. You know, whoever they play in that midfield is solid. Um, so, yeah, that batting in the middle of the pitch is going to be very interesting. Um, we have a solid midfield as well, so it will be good to watch. You know? it will be. I'm looking forward to that game, and that game is on Saturday, uh, 16th of June. Uh, so, obviously, now now we're going to get all magical on you now. And let's say you had a magical wand, and you could choose, Messi excluded, but if you could choose a player from one of your three oppositions, uh, who would you steal and give him a Nigerian passport? <laughs> easily look at Modric. Um, easily look at Modric. He's, you know... Such a creative force in the middle of the field. Um, any team would love to have a player like that. Um, can I like, can I give like a runner up? Because I have like a like a runner up. Like a sure, second. sure, yeah, yeah. If you got another one in there, yeah. But let's let's take two. I'll take Dybala as well. Okay. Because <laughs> uh, he's probably not going to start for Argentina, and I just think that's a travesty. Like a player of that quality, you know. We I'm kind of concerned about our forward options. Um, I mean, it's not terrible, but, you know, yeah, there's some cause for concern there. So having a player like Dybala on a team would be amazing. It would be. And, yeah, they are blessed with uh, um, four or five decent strikers. And I think they've even <laughs> left one behind that couldn't make it. I think it's hardy, like, <laughs> it blows my mind. Yeah. They, they are very lucky. Um, yeah. But they all can't play unless they only put one defender on the pitch. Um <laughs> So what, what about if we went back in Nigeria's past and we actually could take somebody from your from your glory years, maybe in the 90s or even before, uh, who would you, who'd you bring into the current team in their prime? Um, so, I mean, almost obviously, my um, favourite Nigerian player of all time is JJ Okocha, it's, you know. But, but I think, I, again, I think for this current team, I would look for... I would look, Actually, I would I would either look for a goalkeeper. So I'll take Vincent Anyama, um, who has been solid for Nigeria before he retired from international football, and you know, as goalkeeper. Or I would take either one, um, Kanu Wanko, um, classic number nine clinical finisher, or Rashidi Yakini, who scored our first ever goal in the World Cup in USA '94. Yeah. Um, so yeah, any one of those players. Yeah, they, they, did have, they did have a golden era, I think, in the 90s. They had Sunday, Elise, I think, was one of them, another good midfield. So, um, yeah, they, they had some good good players, and they did all, well, not all, but a lot of them graced the Premier League. Um, yeah, yeah and, I, and I, I do remember the Nigerians coming in force. It was good. It was good stuff. Now, how about a scoreline for you? A prediction for the score? I'm going to say we win 2-1. 2-1, okay, very confident. Also, in your group, Argentina opened up their account 
up against Iceland. What about a prediction between those two? Uh, I'd say 3-1 to Argentina. 3-1. Okay, loads of goals there. Loads of goals in that group. So I'm looking forward yeah. to that. And those games will take place on Saturday. Now, how about a last-minute promotional or motivational uh, speech for the Super Eagles? All right. So, you know, it's here. The World Cup is here. All the hype, all the talk about the kits, the jersey, about everything. It's, it's, it doesn't matter. It's inconsequential. You're here, you're representing 190 million people. Um, but don't let that pressure you. Don't let that overwhelm you. Find confidence in that. Channel that into confidence. And, you know, just go out there, play as a collective, play as a unit, and play for your teammates. You know, give your all on the pitch. And whatever happens at the end of the day, know that you worked for it. Let's try to, let's try to win this trophy. <laughs> Yes, let's do it. Let's bring it home to Africa. Give they need they they deserve a winner. It's about bloody time if they can get one. Anyway, let's hope. Fingers crossed. Um, anyway, hope. Thank you again for joining me, and hopefully we can get some reaction from you after the match. Hopefully Nigeria come away with a cheeky victory uh, to turn this group on its head. But yeah, until next time, we'll see you soon. All right. Bye. So about what the fans have been saying, uh, what does the cat think will happen between Croatia and Nigeria? Let's take a little look at what she thinks will happen. for Croatia in this one. If you want to check out what she thinks about the other games in the World Cup, head over to my YouTube channel. She's got a full list from Group A all the way through to Group H. She's also got this brand new hot off the press app. It's a, it's a, it's a completely free app, no, no charges whatsoever. It's a matching game, you've got to match the flags. So it's currently available on Android, but we're trying to push through the availability on iOS. So hopefully by the time this video goes live, it will be out on iOS. Uh, as I said, 100% free. It's just a little side project. Let me know your thoughts on the game in the comments section below. We vote from Team Croatia, we vote from Nigeria, we vote from the cat. As for me, I'm going for... Nigeria, baby. Nigeria. So there you have it, folks. That's pretty much all I've got for you today. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things World Cup related. I am also on Twitter and Facebook. Links to those puppies are in the description below. I um, just want to say that I'll be doing an instant review once this match uh, wraps up. When you hear the final whistle, come back and check on the channel and get my initial thoughts on uh, on the result and, and the consequences of the result. What's going to happen? What does this uh, now lead uh, leave for the both countries? Have they got a chance to make it through to the knockout phases? That kind of stuff. And then later on on the channel, we'll be doing a more detailed review, uh, bringing back the fans and trying to see what they have to say about the result and that kind of stuff. But anyway, all of that bundled under one uh, one channel, so make sure you do me a favor and hit the subscribe button. Anyway, um, yeah, so I've opted for, I've opted for a Nigeria victory. Um, obviously, I saw them play up against England in a friendly. They didn't look, they didn't look good in the first half. In the second half, there was a, was, was, was a different, different atmosphere, different vibe from uh, Nigeria. And I think they can cause problems. Um, and I, and I've, I'm, I've got a sneaky feeling Nigeria could be, could be a, a, a troublemaker in this group. I'm not saying that they're going to go out and win it, but I think they could uh, be a face uh, at the end of the, uh, at the end of the qualifying phases. Um, but anyway, that's just my opinion. Let me know here your opinion in the comment section below. Anyway, until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Now, if you are interested in that Cast the Cat app, you want to hit that button right there. It'll send you over to my WordPress site where you can find a downloadable link. Also, if you've yet to subscribe to the channel, hit that magical button right there. This is your one-stop shop for the 2018 World Cup. I've also got old previews and reviews that you can check out down there. And also let me hear your thoughts and opinions. Whack them in the comments section below. And I will see you all very, very soon.